<clears throat> kind of bird are you? I'm a sparrow. She's a dog. No, I said. What kind of bird are you? I'm a raven. Boys aren't allowed in here. I'll be leaving soon. What happened to your hand? I got hit in the mirror. Really? How did that happen? I lost my temper at myself. What's your name? Sam, what's yours? I'm Susie. It's not polite to stare. Birds, ready. Who are you? Where did you come from? Go back to your seat. He likes you. the angst it's over for a little while folks it's over and so a lot of the angry boys are never gonna watch this <laughs> they're just not they're oh nope, i'm out <laughs> let me know let me know when you get the bodies we'll uh, we'll come back uh, for the rest of us that believe in love and fell in love in our lives this is the the moment on the album where zero meets the love interest for the rest of the album. But I'd like you to fall into that mindset of like, your wedding, getting that mindset. Yeah. That feeling, it's gonna get complicated later, like every marriage, <laughs> okay? Yeah. But right now, it's, uh, you know, it's it's cupids and clouds shooting arrows of hearts. And it's, mag <laughs> it's magical. I remember hearing it. I remember skipping it a lot on the album when I was younger. Me too. So, I, I think I think this is the difference between me, you and me. You have emotions, and I am a fucking robot. <laughs> so, so when you you hear this fruity love song, because you have emotions, you're like, I don't connect to those emotions. You, you hate it. You, you move on. Me. I don't connect to any emotions, so when I hear this fruity love song, it's the same as any other song that I don't connect to emotionally. So I get like, yeah, I, get, I, hear like you. I, can, yeah. I can hear it on more like the technical level of the beauty that is the song. That that would be my explanation. The lack of emotions is nice sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Lacking emotion is an advantage to getting into other music. <laughs> I, I've never heard it put that way. That's very interesting to me. This is one of their biggest departures from what everyone thinks of when they think of the pumpkins. Billy Corgan described this. What I love about this, he uses your language. No one else in my life I've ever heard uses the, the words like into the void or being in the void. I don't know where you got that, but you're the only one that uses that language. So I pull this up today to hear what Billy Corgan say about this song. Here's the first fucking sentence. To counterbalance our many dark excursions into the void. Like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the Mason script? What the hell? <laughs> 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 like, I was very impressed by that. Yes, yeah, so to counterbalance our many dark excursions into the void. I sought some refuge by writing whimsically as well. <laughs> the void i couldn't believe when i read that damn it damn it validating that must be validated yeah i'm sure uh i'm sure <laughs> billy is uh feeling much better about himself knowing that i share yeah, you know, he should man he should <laughs> <laughs> so cupid d lock is a reference to matthew lock is an english baroque composer baroque is the style of music this is this matthew locke wrote a score this one this particular one was called cupid and death in the story of cupid and death cupid and death mix up their arrows <laughs> so when cupid tries to shoot someone to have them fall in love he's killing them and when death's trying to shoot someone to kill them he's out making them fall in love 
There's a sense of danger in the lyrics here. In the song, the devil is pursuing her just for her body. I think a lot of a lot of girls can relate to that, that they were pursued for for sexual reasons, promised love, falsely promised love. And that's what mm. that's the that's what they're navigating. Boys don't go through that as much. This is not serial speaking, I think, in my interpretation. It's not serial speaking. This is the narrator that was in Tonight Tonight coming back and saying, Okay, here's what's going on in the story. I'm sitting on mm. high telling you. Here's her, this is what's happening to her. Zero's gonna come in at the end and speak for himself. I'll, I'll do my best to connect my robot heart together and remember what it's like to, to be in the early stages of love. Do I need to pull up <laughs> wedding photos of you? I mean, what's it gonna take, sir? No, I, I'll, I'll, I'll... <laughs> so, I'm at a disadvantage, y'all, because basically I had a tough day with the kids. Yeah. All right, um. Really fuck you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> fuck you, go to sleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With that, let's continue the cuteness. Keep it in lock. What do they do musically with this? All right, so here's what Billy Corgan said about it. Love is held in the ideal, driven up high, above a nasty world, and held gloriously in places of unshakable faith. In a rare fit of fun, (laughs) even recorded wisping aerosol cans and haughty rusted scissor snips to build up an unusual kaleidoscope chorus, the recording found sounds like scissors scissor snips and that kind of stuff drums are from the band obviously there's a guitar line in it but it's all looped Mm. it's like a five second loop and then they loop it together with all those other found sounds and then then you throw the classical instruments on top of it with the harp yeah (laughs) and um (laughs) man this is like how is that the same band how yeah (laughs) the sound is extremely interesting especially when this came out and what was, I had in the CD player. There was at the time. nothing. Was, there was nothing there like was it. Nothing like it. Yeah, it's a really pretty sound to this song, and and I I really like that. This video helps too. So seeing like all the clips of, you know, uh, love stories and stuff, and ones I've seen before and are familiar with, you know, that that helps too.
magical. Magical, this song. In true Beatles fashion, this is under three minutes, so it's almost over. So what you got? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say this. Yeah. Like you were talking about, how did we go from an ode to no one to this song? Like, this is, this is a really those two songs back to back really good example of just the absolute range that the pumpkins have because no one else can do yes. both yes this well yes right? like, thank I mean, you <laughs> <laughs> i mean what other band is doing that right and on one album nonetheless right i mean two tracks later of- two tracks yeah. after <clears throat> disconnect two tracks yeah. what <laughs> What? <laughs> oh yes, I'm. I am 100 percent with you on that. I want to. I want to harp on the on the lyrics. This is about the 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 girl in the story. So Cupid shoots her with the arrow to grab her attention, swift and quick. <laughs> but the marrow in her bones are pretty thick from the turpentine kisses and mistaken blows. So many of the loves before turned out to be false loves. Mm-hmm. Each one of those false loves is the devil. So the devil yeah. will do what the devil may care. Her mouth is the mischief he doth seek. That's all he wants. He just wants her body. <laughs> so note all ye lovers in love with the sound. Your world could be shattered with nary a note of one Cupid's arrow under your coat. It's that kind of thing. Is like, it doesn't matter if it didn't work out. Mm. It doesn't matter. True love can still come and hit you. Yeah. So we're getting to the point where it's going to shift from the omniscient narrator. Mm -hmm. Now Zero's going to speak. So here we go. Let's see what he has to say in this moment where he meets her. if i had made it to to the point before the spoken word i w- i would have rage quit right there up until yeah. i was probably 22 <laughs> 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 it's not a style that i enjoy overall but i love the words and i like yeah. i like the context of it where the narrator is still singing yeah. And then the character that he's speaking about is going to speak. He's talking about us. It's it's all of a sudden in first person, but he's using the word we, right? Yeah. So in the land of star-crossed lovers, failed failed romances, and barren-hearted wanderers, lonely angry boys, forever lost <laughs> and forsaken missives, and Satan's pole, we seek the unseekable, and we speak the unspeakable. Even as our hopes had gathered dust to dust, I like that line too, because up to this, like, I, what hope did you have? What hope did either of these characters have? But in faith and in compassion and in love, Corgan did that did that spoken word aspect as a as a literal nod to Elvis of all people. <laughs> <laughs> Flood hated it. Corgan dug his heels in and wanted to do it, which I'm seeing on your face. You hate it. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <I hate> it. <laughs> Maybe just spoken word isn't my thing. Like I'm unable to connect to the lyrics the way you are. Like you, you pulled up it, that clip. Yeah. You talked about how you know it was kind of like two broken people finding each other. I, for me, I only only I was broken, right? You know, yeah. I never, you know, I I always kind of viewed April as yes. you know 
my you know the light in the abyss right you yeah know, helping me to find my way like i was the one who was lost she wasn't you know different relationship to love i understand yeah yeah so yeah. it's just like kind of hearing your explanation of the lyrics yeah like and what they mean in the context and stuff like i like these lyrics a lot more now i mean yeah. i never took the time to even try and figure out what they meant before yeah but now that i do like have that that context right it, it yeah. it's like wow these these are really good these are really good right lyrics. even if you're not into it Overall. at least you at least you can say it's clever it's it's clever yeah yeah it really you is. gotta give them credit for that and then what number is this on your list number 29 29. 29. 29. All right. Pretty high, but not yeah. not super high. Yeah. The spoken word pulls it down. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> By a lot. You probably had a, a tough task, though, right? Because for the concept of the song, you've got the narrator yes. talking the yeah. hero in the first part. And then yep. the spoken word is probably done on purpose to draw a differentiation between Zero and the narrator. How else do you do it? You nailed it. <laughs> Love is real, everybody. Believe it. Love is real. I'm Justice James. Bye-bye.